beautiful morning, afternoon, or the lovely evening to all thespians. And willkommen, bienvenu, ich willkommen to this brand new Broadway vlog, episode 3. Although this is episode 2 done properly. We shall discuss the 1975 musical that invites up the razzle-dazzle days of 1924 with Chicago, a musical vaudeville, written by John Kander and Fred Ebb. The musical is set in 1920s Chicago, focusing on Roxy Hart, who is sent to a women's penitentiary, where she meets up with Velma and her lawyer Billy Flynn, played by Cheetah Rivera and Jerry Orbach, respectively. It's a show all about the business of show business. The trials and tribulations of just wanting to be famous for God's sake because you know you can do it, but you can't because you lie. Unlike a chorus line, which swept the Tonys that year, Chicago could just as easily be viewed as a story of self-entitlement with goodish songs. I'll give you the old razzle-dazzle and try to explain it best I can. Roxy gets sent to jail for killing Fred. She meets Morton and comes in contact with Billy Flynn. She rises to fame and falls just as quickly. In my mind, it's all about how fame can go to one's head if not careful. Like certain YouTubers, Jake and Logan Paul. <clears throat> Chicago opened at the 46th Street Theater in June of 1975 and satirized sex, celebrity, and most of all, most important this is, murder. <whistles> Wait, that's the wrong musical. <clears throat> it came out at a time where getting divorced was too taboo at times. The times were vastly changing, which is where the songs nowadays comes from. Take this lyric down. You can like the life you're living, you can live the life you like. You can even marry Harry or mess around with Ike. What I got from that song is that everything is based now and in moments, and the moments can come and go very quickly. The musical Chicago is based on the play of the same name by reporter and playwright Maureen Dallas Watkins, who was assigned to cover the 1924 trials of accused murderers Belua Annan and Belvia Gardner for the Chicago Tribune. In the early 1920s, the Chicago's press and public became riveted by the subject of homicides committed by women. Several high-profile cases across... Uh, several high-profile cases arose with generally involving women killing lovers and husbands. These cases were tried against a backdrop of changing views of women in the Jazz Age and a long string of acquittals by Cook County juries of women murderers. Juries at the time were all men and convicted murderers generally faced death by hanging. They should bring that back. <clears throat> In the 1960s, Gwen Verdon read the play and asked her then-husband, Bob Fosse, about the possibility of creating a musical adaptation. Fosse, appo Fosse approached the playwright, Watkins, numerous times to buy the rights, but she repeatedly declined, much like Pamela Travers. In her later years, Watkins had become a born-again Christian and believed her play glamorized a scandalous way of living. Bob Fosse not only directed and choreographed it, but hired on John Kander and Fred Ebb to write the songs. In 2002, Rob Marshall directed the film, which went on to win six awards, and the musical is ranked number two in the list of longest-running musicals behind Phantom of the Opera. Well, that just about does it for this year's, uh, not this year, this episode, rather, of the theater show I'm running. I forgot what it's called. It's... I'll think of something. Have a good day.